Hello there, my name is Connor McMillan. I am an IFS trained life coach, and I also teach coaches and therapists how to have the biggest impact in their clients by helping their clients develop self-leadership. So when it comes to IFS, as you most likely already know if you've been watching us here on this channel or you've done your own research, IFS has a few different components to it. You have parts, which can be broken up into protectors and exiles. Protectors can be broken up into managers and firefighters. And at the center of everything, you have self. You have self energy, you have self leadership. And self, the idea and the concept, it shows up in different ways, probably in every uh, modality that encourages growth and healing exploration. And that's a state of mindfulness and a state of presence. In IFS specifically, three characteristics I always love to name are calm, curious, and compassionate. So the idea of self-leadership, it's not strictly within the concepts of IFS, but IFS can really help us develop more self-awareness of when we are in self-energy and when we are not. It can also do a whole lot of other great stuff. But when it comes to self-leadership, what I have found in the decade of coaching work and IFS-based coaching work that I've done is our leadership capacity for ourselves breaks down over time for a few different reasons. And the number one reason that I think from what I've seen it breaks down from is a lack of trust. Our parts can lose trust in us as a leader. So I often encourage my clients and my students to look at leaders that they actually would want to be led by. People they actually respect, they genuinely respect, and they genuinely would follow them to some degree. What is it about these people that allows us to have faith in them? It's trust. We trust them. And we are just simply not going to allow someone else to lead us if we do not trust them. Well, the same thing is happening with us internally. We have all these different parts that so much want to be cared for and really want to be led and want direction and want clarity. But if they don't trust us that we can do those things, then they're going to show up in ways that may not be as integrated as is possible and may not actually be as useful as they think they are being. There's a lot of IFS work that is done from the inside, right? And a lot of talk therapy and other forms of therapy, emotional based therapy work that way. And there's a good reason for that. And it's really important. It's also important to add elements of action to that emotional work that you have been doing. And when it comes to rebuilding trust, one way that you can do that is to stop breaking promises. So many of us are making commitments all the time that we have no intention of keeping. Sometimes we're making commitments we think we have every intention of keeping, but when it comes down to it, we just don't. So we need to stop that process. So one thing I do with my clients is to recommend that they pull way back on their commitments in general, but for a certain amount of time, like let's just say for one week, you try to not make any commitments. And I recognize that, you know, there's some times that we, we genuinely have to commit to something. Um, somebody asks us for a very definitive yes or no, and we want it we want it to be yes, but if we're not definitive, then that opportunity goes away. So sometimes you need to make those commitments, but the, the try here is to absolutely keep all the commitments you are making. And one opportunity is to tell other people that you're trying out this new thing to not overcommit yourself. And if they ask you to make a plan with them, rather than immediately answering and say, you know, I'm trying to give myself a little time before I make a commitment, because when I make a commitment, I want to be 100% on board. I want to absolutely do it, you know, life or death kind of situation. And I, and, uh, I, I need a little time. And then sleep on it. And then give your answer. And if you can track the commitments that you have made, and the commitments that you have kept, and then celebrate yourself for those commitments you have kept. And the more that we can follow through with those, the more we rebuild or build for the first time trust that we can lead, that we can follow through, that when we say we're gonna do something, 
we actually do it. This instills a positive feedback loop for yourself when making commitments and sticking to them. It's also really important to keep track of the commitments that you don't keep and to really ask yourself like, well, why? Like, was it, was it reasonable? Was it appropriate? How did I feel? Can I have compassion for myself while also committing to doing better in the future? And I think all those things are possible uh, and reasonable for you to do. It doesn't matter how small commitments are. What matters is that they're followed through. And just like any other thing, um, when it comes to action steps and changing habits and changing the way your brain works, you always want to start small. You don't want to go after this huge thing if you've never done any of it before. You don't want to go from zero to 100. You want to go from zero to like 0.1 because that way you can build up momentum gradually. And in the process, the celebration of completing something. That's where the real change happens. So make sure that you're celebrating that. And over time, you will find yourself trusting in yourself more, and so will your parts. I hope that's helpful for you in your journey, and we've got two options for you. Programs on IFS at internalfamilysystems.org and also the Self-Leadership Coaching Academy for coaches, aspiring coaches, therapists who want to add an action step to your therapy. Come over and check it out in the link below and I hope you have a beautiful day. We'll see you at the next one.